Hey, what's going on guys? Today I have the first video in the series. I'm going to be doing uh, two more videos for the Ryzen 1700X and the 1800X. When the cheaper Ryzen processors come out, I will be doing a build especially for them. I left a link to each one of these components and its alternatives in the description. I'll also leave a plus sign in the description next to every item that does not fit the budget, but I, that I still recommend it in the video as an alternative, just in case that you can spend a little bit more extra on your build. So we are starting out with the Ryzen 7 1700 without the X. Um, 8 core, 16 thread, 4 megabyte level 2 cache, 60 megabyte level 3 cache. Now the recent versions that I've seen on Amazon, for example, come with the Wraith Spire cooler. That this processor can be overclocked to 4.0 gigahertz with this Wraith Spire cooler that comes with it. Um, however, now considering the price of the Ryzen 1700, I think possibly 7700K or 6700K from Intel uh, could be a better option for gaming, but since this is a Ryzen build, we'll just keep going with Ryzen anyway. TDP of the 1700 is 65 watts, while the 1700X and the 1800X are both 95 watts. Now this processor also supports the XFR auto overclock, which can push it up to 3.7 gigahertz. Now you could argue that the 1700X could be a better buy. It is $80 more expensive and it does not fit the budget of this build which is under a thousand dollars also while it may not be the best choice for gaming ryzen does shine in stuff like video editing uh photoshop after effects stuff like that so if this fits the criteria of the build that you want to make go with the 1700 now i've done a little bit more research and there is a way that you can get a 1700x in this build uh so for under a thousand dollars but um some other items that i suggested may uh have to be completely removed so for example either ssd or the hard drive could be removed uh, one of them is like $50. Now there's also the aftermarket cores that I'm about to suggest that you could get rid of. Um, and in that sense, yeah, you could get the $80 more and get the 1700X under a thousand dollar build. Now have in mind, I did not see a Wraith cooler coming with the 1700X yet. This video is made in March. If you're watching sometimes after that, go check it out. Uh, maybe it's available. Now we're moving on to the aftermarket cooler that I suggested. One of these I own myself. Um, by the way, Noctua NHLX 65 uh, is already supporting Ryzen, so you do not need any extra brackets. In case you do own some of these coolers, you may have to request an AM4 compatible bracket from whoever made your cooler. But this specific Noctua does support Ryzen, and uh, each one of these does fit in within the budget. The Noctua and the Cryo Rig do come with thermal paste. In this image that I made, you can also see them all being sorted by noise and by height and since this Noctua that I'm suggesting already supports Ryzen, has the lowest amount of noise, highest amount of rotations per minute, and is least bulky out of all three, I would suggest you go with that one. I personally own the Cooler Master 212 and I owned it for about three years now and I had no problems with it whatsoever. However, I'm using an IE7-4770K, which I did overclock on this processor, but you do need an additional bracket for AIM-4 Ryzen uh, in case you want to use that one. And next up are the motherboards. Um, this was a tough one because some AIM4 motherboards are having bias problems. However, as support for this new technology comes out and gets better and better, uh, new biases will come out and all the issues are getting ironed out as we speak. So MSI B350 Tomahawk is kind of like a mid-range board. It's ATX size and it has pretty much everything that you're going to need to run this build and upgrade in the future. It only supports crossfire, so you can forget about SLI, at least on this board. It has an M2 slot for the those fast SSDs. It has uh, four DDR4 slots, steel armor for one of the GPU slots from what I can see. The backlighting on the sides of the board is in color red, so it would match the Ryzen Wraith cooler very nicely. All in all, a decent board. I think there's some Asus board which are about $10 to $20 cheaper. Um, if I can find them, I'll put them in the description and I'll try to find ones that have the least problems and possibly best reviews. Now, the other board we have is the ASRock X370 Killer. It's only about $20, $30 more expensive. On Newegg, after rebate, it's $134. This board has more options than the previous one. It has crossfire and SLI. It comes with one Ultra M2 slot and six SATA 3 connectors. It does support RAID 0, the previous one doesn't. It comes with better audio chipset as well. It even has Bluetooth support. It supports LED strips so you can attach them and just light up the entire build. Uh, however, the build itself has RGB lights on it which are also red because Ryzen. 
It also has steel armor for the PCI Express slots and it is fully ATX motherboard. It has a lot more options than the previous board and I would probably suggest this one. The X370 chipset is top of the line AM4 chipset. So if you can spend extra 20 to 30 dollars, this motherboard is a very, very good choice. Now we have what some would say the most important part of the build is, which are the graphics cards. Now, I chose the XFX 480 GTR. In my opinion, it's the best 480 version there is. It comes with 8 gigabytes of memory, core clock is 1.12, boost clock is 134. Power requirement is okay, 150 watts. Now this card is about 230 something dollars, check the price. But the reason that I'm suggesting it is that it does fit the budget. You could get two of these and fire them up in SLI. Just get the second one a few months from now. And the performance you can expect from this is what a GTX 1080 offers currently. It's not as fast. I always prefer single GPUs instead of two cards. But getting two of these in Crossfire is less than $500. While 1080s go between 600 and 700 hundred dollars if you look at it like that it's a, probably a better choice but I understand that most of you will not want to run this in Crossfire. And for 1080p gaming, this is very, very good. I have a 970 and with a little bit of overclocking, the 480 can reach the same performance. And I don't really have any problems in most games of running them on their highest settings. Of course, always being smart with your settings is recommended. You get this card if you have a 1080p monitor and you're not planning on upgrading in the future, it's going to push games over 60 FPS. But you always have to be wary of those shitty console ports which are roaming around like the Ghost Recon on Wildlands, which is, which is just, uh, I can run that game on nearly all high settings, but I think there's like one option and it just ruins everything. I forgot what the option was, but there's many games like that now. And uh, no matter the PC that you get, uh, you can still get shit performance anyway. If you also want to go with a full on AMD build, you could wait a couple of months for the Vega to come out. There's pretty much nothing on it yet, but I suppose as AMD usually does, um, the prices will be very much affordable and the price to performance ratio will be good. But but still, that's up to you. Now, the second card I'm recommending is obviously going to go way over the budget. It is a lot more expensive, but it is about 30 to 40% faster. The Gigabyte GTX 1070. This is the Founders Edition, but you can get any, any version that you want. Now, I'm recommending this card in case you want to go with 1440p gaming, which is what Ryzen is mostly aimed at, along with 4K. You're not going to go for this card with 1080p gaming in mind. You're going for this if you want 2K, 1440p gaming, or you have a 1080p monitor that's like 144, 165 hertz and you want to push your games up to that point. So yeah, I'm just throwing that in there. It's a very good card. What, what can I say? The Radeon RX 480 will still do okay in uh, 1440p resolutions. Don't get me wrong, but you would have to be very smart with your settings and not expect too much out of the card. Now, as far as RAM memories go, we have Kingston HyperX Fury Black and Corsair Vengeance LPX. Both are eight gigabytes. There's different versions with different frequencies. Kingston HyperX has lower latencies than the Corsair Vengeance. Both support XMP profiles and auto overclock for just a little bit extra more speed. Uh, Kingston is about $5 cheaper and I would probably go with that one personally. Now we have storage here. Um, I managed to put an SSD and a hard drive in this build. I couldn't be bothered to make a new image. I'm using the old one from a previous build I made. The SanDisk SSD is less than $50 right now. It's 240 gigabytes so you know install your operating system on that maybe a couple of games. It's going to do just fine. Uh, it's not as fast as Samsung or any of the you know premium SSDs but it is reliable and pretty damn cheap for an SSD. The Western Digital Caviar Blue the hard drive is one terabyte two-year warranty uh, $50 pretty damn cheap for that one both are going to do just fine. So we're getting to the power supply I know this video has been too long just bear with me. Seasonic S12 um, five-year warranty 620 watts is going to be enough for this build even if you get a 1070 however I would always recommend more power to give you just a little bit more extra headroom. It's got about 87% efficiency. This is a very new release. It's fairly cheap for the power supply and it's going to run just fine. However, to give you more headroom for the future, I would recommend the EVGA 700B1. Three year warranty, so it's not like five on the Seasonic. 700 watts is going to be enough for the upgrades that you're going to make to this. And finally, to put everything into something, we need a case, I, I suppose. So we got two choices here. We got the NZXT and we got Deepcool Tesseract. Uh, I would preferably go with the NZXT. When I'm looking for a case, you need something that has pretty decent cable management, something that looks decent as well, has both front and back fans so that there is decent airflow. Is that pretty damn important? 
So the Deepcool Tesseract SW is cheaper than the NZXT case. However, it is lower quality, but still everything that you're going to need is going to fit that case and it's got pretty decent airflow. NZXT on the other hand, very high quality case. It is about $20 more expensive. It's got about seven expansion slots, 90% steel construction. Cable management is very good compared to some other cases I've seen out there. It's got two fans in the front, one in the back and one on the top. So I would highly recommend the NZXT in this case. Well, um, case. Um, pun completely unintended. If you managed to get this far into the video, congratulations. You have a very long attention span. Please comment down below and let me know if you at least watched till the end. Thank you very much for watching. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. If this video helped you in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. And um, I will be making more Ryzen builds in the future. Thank you for watching. See you next time.